bolt to go in. That is the and it should be used. <laughs> so I've got the, um, let's take a little. Hi there, and welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now on this short video, and I promise you it will be short, most unlike me, I'm gonna show you how to use a Picoscope, that's a laptop based oscilloscope and this one cost me about $230 New Zealand and it came with all the free software and everything and it's free updates and there's no subscription fees or anything, it's really really good and no I don't sell them but I will put uh, a link in the description to uh, the supplier here in New Zealand or one of the suppliers, the guy that I bought mine from and uh, if you want one then you know give them a call and I'm sure they'll do a good deal. The video is going to be covering how to capture a waveform from the uh, injector, the fuel injector on a motorcycle. And I've got my, one of my bikes up on the hoist, which I'm preparing at the moment for a, a two day ride down the South Island in about a month's time. So I thought, well, while it's on the hoist, let's grab some waveforms on the Picoscope, known good waveforms, so that if I have a problem, you know, a year or two years down the line, I can compare the known good waveforms from each of the sensors and actuators on the bike with uh, you know what the bike's doing while it has the fault and that will help dramatically for me to narrow down where the problem is and uh, if it's a sensor fault or an actuator fault then I'll know which one's playing up. Okay so we're going to go over to the bike and I'll show you how to rig up the Picoscope to take away from from the fuel injector. Here we go. Okay so we've got the ECU of the bike I've moved it, it normally lives down here and I've moved it up onto the top of the frame because it's just so much easier to get to all the wires and you're far better off testing this as picking up signals from the ECU end because um, if the signal's wrong then the, you know at this point then you, it's testing really the wiring harness and the sensor at the same time so if the signal's bad then you can go back down to the sensor take the same waveform again sample again from the actual injector if the signal from the injector then becomes good then you know you've got a problem with a new wiring harness okay so rather than dig into the wire and damage the insulation we're going to back probe this connector here, look into the ECU, and very carefully, we're going to use a pin, just a cheap old pin, and we're going to stick it down there, very carefully through the the um, insulation, and well, the insulation, there's like a little, little foam grommet in there to keep all the moisture out. It's quite a fat wire, so I'm just going to be careful we don't go places we shouldn't with the pin. And you'll know when you're in, because it goes quite a long way. You just got to be patient doing this sort of stuff, especially when it's your own bike. <laughs> there we go. Right. We are in. Perfect. Right. So what I need to do now is rig up the old uh, test lead. And these Picoscope ones have got a really cool little sort of claw on the end that grabs onto these pins, which is bloody good. So we'll just hook that on there. And you've got to make sure that you stay away from the insulation at the end. There's a bit of a plastic blob at the end. We don't want to be touching that. There we go. Right. We need to go on to battery negative. So let's give the whole thing a bit of a skew across. Gives a bit more, more of a lead. It's quite a short earth wire really, isn't it? Right. So hopefully we're going to be on at that. Let's give it a go. Okay, let's get the Picoscope connected up. That's how you buy those little pins, actually. Real cheap and cheerful. About $2 a, a wheel or two wheels. Right, so now what you need to do is plug in the Picoscope onto the USB. That powers it up. And then we're going to be using um, channel A for this one. There we go. It makes no difference. You use A or B, but A is the one you want to use first. Right, let's head over to the laptop. Okay, so we're just going to start up the Picoscope. Click on the icon. Takes a few seconds to come into life. Let's see what this injector looks like. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up the scope uh, within certain parameters. Now you always get this sort of, you know, static at the start. Now we're going to use uh, 50 millisecond divisions. 
that's per square on the screen. So 50 milliseconds, that's that one there, look. And the voltage, unfortunately we can't quite go high enough on this scope, but the biggest, the highest we can go is plus or minus 20 volts. That's all we've got, right. And it always starts to record as soon as you open it up, so we'll just stop that. And now we're ready to take a reading. So I'll press play and go and start the bike. So, where are we? Let's just go back a few screens. Lots of screens. Okay, so where did the bike first start up? So she's idling at that point. There we go. So at this, this point here, the bike isn't running, or the injector's not being triggered, should I say. And then it gives it a little bit of juice, that cold start for the first squirt. You can see that the duty cycle's a bit wider. And then, it all sort of settles down. It's just idling now. So what I want to do is take a reading of how long that injector is open for. And to do that, I've got some little measuring. Come back, there we go. Look. You can do this look, it's pretty cool. So set one little marker to there. And we've got our timeline along the bottom in milliseconds. And then grab another one of those. And it'll tell us the distance in time between the opening period. And th this is your 12 volts, your battery voltage here, look. And the ECU grounds that wire, so it goes down to zero volts. So whilst it's being grounded, you know, there's a there's a closed circuit, and the pintle, or the, the winding's energized, there's current flowing through the winding, and it lifts the pintle off its seat, and it's basically spraying fuel into the intake manifold. So this is the open period of the injector, time-wise. And you can also do a duty cycle test as well on it, and that will give you a similar. So here, at idle, that injector is open for 2.637 milliseconds. So 2.637 milliseconds. I've got to write this down, Colin, if you get. Okay, and then if we go a bit longer, a bit further along the graph, I'll just put those little markers back. Clink. Clink. There we are, inactive down there. Just scroll the screen back down again, and we'll flick through some more pages. And we gave the bike a bit of a rev at some point, didn't we? So that would have been maybe near the end somewhere. Oh, too far. Come back. And the faster the engine's revving, the closer these are together. So they're all pretty close. So she's revving quite high. So what we'll do now is I want to measure how long the open period is when she's being revved. Because don't forget the TPS gives the ECU a, a signal of load, or interprets that as load. So as load increases, so does the fueling. So this should be a lot more. Let's have a look. Okay. Yes. Four, so almost double actually, 4.343 milliseconds. Yeah, so almost, almost double, not quite. So at that point in time, there's about almost twice as much fuel going into the intake manifold. And these, you know, the information that you can get from this is just phenomenal, you know. It's a shame that this picoscope doesn't go above 20 volts because you'd see the, the final peak. Uh, that's, that's an induced voltage into the wire. Um, as the pintle snaps shut, it actually creates a current flow in that circuit so it's quite normal there you go, look that's the start again good stuff so again known good waveform really useful to have right back to the bench oh i almost forgot if you want to save this waveform and that's all the pages together then all you need to do is just go on to which fingers are drying out go up to file Save as, and we'll just call it Injector. Save. 
and you can then attach that file to an email and send it to anybody they can then um, you know download the PicoScope software you don't have to buy a PicoScope to download the software and they can view the file and help you to diagnose a problem it's pretty cool right back to the bench so there you go a really useful tool and it allows you to see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see and certainly help with diagnostics especially if you've got some known good waveform files for the particular bike that you're working on and if you go online people do sort of you know share around the known good waveforms so you, if you haven't taken one yourself sometimes you can get hold of them and people like Eric O does a lot of the, he does a lot of uh, car diagnostics and he uses a picoscope and man it's bloody interesting some of the stuff that he comes across and to see him diagnose it diagnose the faults Okay, well, it was just a short video, so I better stop rambling. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscribe button. You'll see a little gear icon pop up, pop up, and then you can tick the box to turn on notifications. And our friends down at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals, but ideally, the comments section on YouTube is always the best because other people can see your comments, they can see your questions, and you can see the answers that I give to other people's questions, and it might answer yours. So it's, you know, share and share alike. And you'll also find that other people, viewers, will actually comment uh, as well, and they'll try and help each other out, which is really, really cool. That's what the channel's all about. It's sort of a collaboration, really. I just sort of, I'm just the catalyst. <laughs> okay, crew, well, thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.